Hey, welcome to Mushroom Adventures. Hey, um, looks like we got a big problem. You're looking at it right now. As you can see, uh, this old English basement with all of its uh, foundational field stones. The, uh, the mortar was poorly put in to begin with. And I don't know if you can tell really in this video, but because it was so poorly put in, the groundwater washed through it, ate it away, and replaced it with nasty dirt. And that's what has been giving my mushrooms to growing down here, actually green mold growing on the mushrooms, which is a terrible, terrible situation. But, uh, yeah, I even tried salvaging them, put them outside, but it was so bad that it actually got into the logs I had. But I've been busting out all that old mortar and dirt. I got one of these babies. It does the trick, I tell you what. It's called a rotary hammer, or a demo hammer. But, uh, yeah, you can tell right now I got no mushrooms down here. And it's all pretty much in emergency rehab mode. So, uh, when I get done, I'll show you what I've done. And uh, we'll get back to cropping out some good king oysters and whatnot down here. Alright, see you in a while. Alright. I got her done. You can see that I've used cement on all the walls that had exposed rock. We'll go over here. All the way to the fuse box. I used type N mortar, which you mix it with three parts sand. And that's what I smeared up on the walls. You gotta get the consistency right too because it won't stay up there very well if it's uh, too thick. Also what I had to do is cement the floor in because I didn't know it but there used to be an old drain back here in this corner that was just full of dirt but they had the uh, the floor running all the way to it so I I just filled it in and it would all it all run to this drain over here now. You see I got <clears throat> I got some screen there to protect from any cement or sand coming down. I learned a few things doing this. Um, I haven't done a lot of cement work. But maybe uh, if you got a similar situation it might be good to give you a few tips. I noticed that uh, when slapping it on there I use a mortar board and a large trowel that uh, an upwards kind of a stroke of motion seemed to be the best but where it where it got real craggy with the rocks like uh, here I'll show you like areas over here where you can see I still even have a rock sticking out it's, it's, with this piece of pipe it's just too difficult to span it with the cement there that'll it won't stick on it but a lot of places like that I just had to either use rocks to kind of span the distance and cement those in or uh, kind of use like uh, sideways motions when smoothing it out and that seems to uh, get a little more strength hanging up on the walls. But it's definitely a lot easier putting cement down on the ground. Now this is all curing. I got done with it probably a couple of days ago and so I'm going to give it a few days still until it all turns uh, the same white color. I'm going to paint the stairs, paint the exposed concrete on the floor, all the concrete on the walls, and anywhere that I see wood that uh, is not on the ceiling that I can't really plastic wrap off. I'm going to, it's all going to get painted with dry lock waterproofing paint. And that will not only give it a seal from water ever coming back in and seal the concrete, it will also uh, allow me to have a nice smoother surface to wash down and keep it clean. Of course I got a cement mixer because that's way too much cement. 
for me to hand mix. Um, so yeah, here in a few days, I'm going to paint it all the way around to that fuse box and the floor all the way around here. Now I'm going to re-plastic wrap the ceiling. I'm going to plastic off anywhere that has uh, electrical outlets coming off and protect it. And we're going to get down to business. Oh, as also as well, you see I have here my uh, air intake vent, which uh, I just keep opening and the uh, exhaust vent will actually make a vacuum and pull fresh air in from the outside. But uh, I've discovered trying to do some things outside, making logs while I've been doing this project that I really haven't had a lot of success because I just have too many, too many mold spores outside. And so uh, I'm going to make a, uh, a filter system so the air coming in is going to have a fan pushing it through a, uh, a filter of a quality that will filter out mold spores. It doesn't have to be really high quality, but at least that quality. And then uh, I can have sterile air being pumped into here. That will greatly uh, increase the chances of success. So you can see I still have a lot of work to do, but uh, after we get done painting, we'll take a look and see what it looks like. All right, we are done. Now before I go into the basement, I want you to see what I got right here. This is actually some old lady curtains. They, uh, they're not really laced, they're just, you probably can't hardly even see it. But it's really fine mesh, and what I've done is I've taken a grommet kit See here, little grommets, and I've spaced it appropriately. So now it's like a a pre-filter going into the basement because there's always going to be air drawn into the basement because I have more air being sucked out um, than coming in from the fresh air. So we'll pop this off real quick. All right, now you can see the entryway I have all painted with primer. No uh, bare wood, nothing nasty, even the floor, even though the linoleum was in bad shape, I still painted it, and it'll be all right. Let's see, we got blue tarp now, separating the area where there is the uh, furnace filter. You can see back here, the water heater, and Pretty much any carts and shelves and janitorial stuff I'll need. Now you can see back here, it might be too dark, I don't know. But I have another 100 CFM fan that's hooked into the uh, exhaust from the water heater and the furnace. And it's actually forcing the exhaust out. Because you don't want to have an issue where you're pulling so much pressure out of the basement that you start sucking in carbon monoxide. That's a really bad situation. But with that vacuum behind the tarp, it's going to create a negative pressure area. So anything I put behind there, I don't, it doesn't matter if it's really clean or not because the air is never going to come this way. But, you know, I'm still going to try to keep it relatively clean. And you can see around here, everything is painted with that dry lock. Kind of reminds me of a, a polar bear habitat. You know at the zoo? White painted concrete. It's really bright, much brighter than it was with uh, just white plastic hanging, I have to say. And I left this area open here to make sure it's painted. And you see I painted the floor all the way to uh, a little bit of a margin across so I don't get anything peeling up. But everything has been washed down with the hose. All the uh, silt that was on the floor has been rinsed off, swept up, and it's pretty much ready to go. Now you see on the ceiling, I have pretty much the, the thinnest sheet plastic you can buy. It doesn't have to be high grade. And on the margins, you see they come down about 6-8 inches. And then I got a blob of uh, silicon that's keeping it affixed to the wall a little bit. And it's not a perfect seal, but it'll, it'll keep the dust and junk from falling down and getting it into all the projects. And here I have my filter system to take outdoor fresh air and pump it inside 
and here's the, the filter that's mold grade. Um, and here's the kind of a neat piece of equipment I bought. It's called a hot pod. And what it is is an inline electric heater. This one's a 1,000 watt model. And now uh, when I want to bring fresh air in the middle of winter, because you know it's going to get like 10 degrees or cooler outside, I'll at least be able to heat it up to a point where it's above freezing. That way I'm not really chilling this basement out. Because you know I still got to work down here. And ideally I want to keep the temperature about 55 to 65. That's really the best. And so you can see uh, I really am ready to go. I, what I have to do now is uh, give it a bleach bomb. What I'm going to do with that is you use one cup of bleach per one gallon of water. Mix it in a, uh, a janitorial uh, mop bucket or something like that. And then you're going to wear a gas mask. And make sure you want to get the good grade gas mask from Home Depot or Lowe's that is rated for chlorine because if you don't you're still going to have your nose is burning you won't be able to taste anything yeah, that's no good but what we're going to do is use that bleach water and we're just going to slop it slop it all across the floor slop it all across the wall and the only fan that's going to be running down here is the furnace exhaust and we're going to try to just to not come down here for about a 24 hour period and what that's going to do is all the fumes from the bleach is going to come out and get every little nook and cranny, you know, like in these, in these little holes right there, you know, because they can't really spray into stuff and clean, you know, everywhere, but that way it's going to be super clean and super ready to go. So uh, I guess that does it for this episode. Next episode, we're going to get into uh, preparing some grain spawn. Or maybe even start some lab work. I have to see how things go. But uh, I'm glad you're sticking with me. I know it's been a while. And we'll get into business and start growing some really cool mushrooms. All right. See you next time on Mushroom Adventures. Bye-bye.